Well, hello there. This is Dr. Dell, and I am going to be working with a video today with uh, Stefan. And I'm going to assume that you have a supercomputer or you're going to acquire one. And of course, on our website, we have all sorts of things that you can do with a supercomputer for uh, older students. Uh, it's a marvelous thing, but it's also a lot of things you can do for a young student. And this video is going to be about what you can do if you have a child somewhere between age three and six, we'll call it pre-K, and there's several things you can do, and Stephanie is going to demonstrate it and tell you about it. Hi. Even kids who are three to six years old can use a supercomputer with some supervision. The primary area where these kids would work is in a game called Child's Play. It's a collection of many, many games. So the first game I would like to show you is a memory game. Anytime if you're unsure how the game works, come up here, click on the question mark, and there are directions that tell you how to play. So when you go into a game, your child can play this game with some help from you, but they can quickly learn how to do it themselves. Anytime if you're unsure how to play the game, click on the question mark and directions will pop up to help you. So it lets them know right away if they found a match or not. So this helps them with remembering where objects are and also with their hand-eye coordination. If they've gone beyond this level, you can always increase the level. To more and more complicated games so that they can feel that sense of accomplishment. Now Stephanie, let me ask you this, Dr. Dell. Uh, I'm assuming that they can either use a mouse if they're coordinated enough or they could use a touchpad, a keyboard with a touchpad on it. Yes, that e is correct. Either one. So the idea is to start them with just something very, very simple and it's an eye-hand coordination and recognizing different objects mm -hmm. and mashing them up. So this is a, a great skill that a very young child can begin to learn. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay, okay, now what is another thing that we can do then? So a similar game to memory is memory with sound. It works the same way. But in this case, they have buttons and they have to match the sounds. All right, so we found that sound again. And now they've matched. Well, I'm not sure I could do that, but <laughs> I, I, I know a lot of these young children are better than I am on a lot of things. Uh, I can't imagine how this might have helped me when I was really young, but uh, what have you observed with the young children that uh, can play some of these games? I've observed that at first they're a little unsure and they might need some help, especially with the mouse and how that works on the screen. But once they begin to pick it up, they really enjoy these games. So the bottom line is then they need a coach to get them started and they'll make a lot of mistakes and get frustrated, but you explain that's good. That's how you're learning because that after all is in the long run how you learn math. You make a lot of mistakes and you learn from those mistakes and you, you grow and you grow. It's like a sport. So you're really getting children not only eye-hand coordination, but you're teaching them both visual and audio skills too. Yes, and it also helps them with a sense of accomplishment that as they see themselves increasing in these levels, they realize that there are more and more skills that they can do. I think that's absolutely marvelous. Okay, what else we got? Okay. So we have the Simon Says game. And do is click start. And this, and this is just like the Simon Says game that we all grew up with, but it's all here in one place. It's all on the supercomputer. So another game that we have is sounds. So before in the memory, they were matching sounds or they were matching matching pictures. In this one, so they hear this sound and they have to figure out what animal made that noise. So you see, when I clicked on the wrong animal, nothing happened. So they are not getting any negative feedback, but when they cr click on the correct animal, they're getting positive feedback. So in other words, they can click on several animals till they find the right one. And then they can play the game again and see if they can get it the first time. 
Correct. Or second time. I, I think that's an absolutely marvelous thing because th- this is showing them how to associate sounds with visual. It's coordinating audio and visual. And that's a very important skill to learn, obviously, later on when you're learning language because you're going to associate a word with a an object. Here it's a sound. Now, that, that's quite interesting. Absolutely. And in addition to having games, there are puzzles that they can do. So, you know, we all love to do puzzles with our kids, but sometimes puzzles fall on the floor. Sometimes a piece gets lost. Here, it's all in one computer, and your pieces can't get lost. So it shows here the pieces. It gives them a picture of what the puzzle is supposed to look like. And they can click. And it tells them when they put the piece in the, in the right place. If they try to put it in the wrong place, they just get a little musical note that says, nope, that's not it, and you have to put it in the right place. Well, that's quite interesting. Um, <laughs> I think maybe I could learn something from this, uh, even though I'm uh, a little bit older than preschool. A little bit. And again, was with, in the games levels, in the puzzle, they can also select on more and more complicated levels of puzzles as they get that sense of accomplishment, and they get a bigger, <laughs> and they get a bigger challenge. So here, we've gone from a four-piece puzzle to a 16-piece puzzle. Yeah, wow, that's quite interesting. Um, And that's very important when you're learning. Um, You need to climb the ladder one step at a time, and you develop your skills more progressively. And obviously these games were created by people that really understand learning and child psychology and all that. And I think it's just wonderful. And then the idea is if you've got it now in in a delivery system that is very easy to set a child down, And it also probably increases their concentration skills. Because I notice children, when they play a game that they enjoy, can concentrate for extended periods of time. And they even when you have children that they think might have uh, what they call ACD or something like that, that's not necessarily true. If they get into something they like, they can really study intensively. And that'll be important as they grow in life and go on and finding things like that. And fortunately, I believe with the supercomputer, we have this type of thing, really, that just extends up to children of all ages. But this is how they get started. Now, are there how many more things are there for the uh, for children? I, we'll just quickly finish this video, and you can just quickly uh, review what else there is. Sure, there are other games, but there is one in particular that I wanted to show, and that is a game called Fish. So one of the big impediments to younger children using any computer at all, but also a supercomputer, is that they don't understand the hand-eye coordination, how the mouse works with the cursor on the screen. So this fish game is a fun way for them to learn. So it plays music and their goal is to use the mouse to click on the fish. And if they get it, the fish disappears, so they know that they've done what they're looking to do. (laughs) But this is uh, something then that you might want to start a child with right away, so they can actually learn how to use either the touchpad you've given them or the mouse, whichever one you're trying to teach them. Absolutely. This is a skill they'll use their entire lives working with computers, and this is a really simple, fun way to get them started. Okay, that's wonderful, Stephanie. Is there anything else that we need to tell uh, a parent of a pre-K child now before we sign off on this video? I think I would just say that there are a lot of different games here, and kids have all different interests. So if the first game doesn't work, look here and find something else. You're sure to find something they enjoy. Well, I agree with that. In fact, what we find is children of all ages, um, once they start using the supercomputer, you can use it as a motivator for other things, as a reward. Yeah, and, and, and it's an educational reward. It's something, well, if you uh, clean up your room or if you pick up your toys, then you get to go play on the supercomputer for a while. And they love to do that. I mean, the whole idea of education at all levels, and I, of course, apply this to math education, it's got to be enjoyable. It's got to be something you want to do. It's got to be like a game or a sport. And that's what this is. 
And the one other thing about the supercomputer is you might have children of multiple ages, and they'll all have something to do. And you're going to see in some other videos what children, older children, six to nine can do, and then what children that are older than that can do, all the way up through, uh, quite frankly, the supercomputer is extremely powerful for uh, college students going to MIT or something because of what they can do. It's just like climbing a ladder that uh, starts at the very ground floor here and then just goes all the way and, and really almost doesn't end. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot, Stephanie. We'll see you on the next video. If you have children that are age six to nine or older children, watch some of the other videos. This is Dr. Dell. I'll see you on another video.